Junkie, thank you for joining me for another episode of the Endurance Junkie podcast, the show where I will be interviewing some of the fastest, smartest, and most inspiring people active in the endurance world today. Pure Athlete is a range of natural body care products developed to relieve muscle pain after exercise and to help athletes recover from sore muscles after intensive sports training. It was co-founded in 2010 by Greg Muller, who has over 20 years of experience in the health and fitness industry, training many professional athletes and sports teams, elite soldiers, and numerous individuals pursuing their health and fitness goals. Greg, thanks for taking the time to chat here today. For those of us who don't know you, tell us a bit about yourself, your background, and how you ended up running the Physical Education School of the New Zealand Military. Thanks, Peter, and uh, it's great to be here. Just, um, I guess, I I actually started out my career as a vehicle mechanic, uh, fixing cars, um, and I was a terrible mechanic, uh, and soon realized I started in the military, and soon realized that I really liked um, the what the physical training instructors in the military were doing. So um, I went across and did the selection course for that, which was about a week long, um, a fairly intense physical test of you and uh, your, of your physical and mental character. Um, subsequently passed that and then went through all the uh, phys ed uh, training courses they have in the military and went on to be the director of the phys ed school there. Um, so that was a pretty comprehensive background in terms of uh, the training they did uh, or we did it was quite physical but also we did all the uh, the normal things anatomy and physiology through our training school and stuff like that um, yeah so that's pretty much the beginning of it yeah cool um, how long have you had you done that um, I started I started in the phys ed in 1989 so that's uh, what's that 25 years ago now yeah. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, how long did you do it? Because you left the army and and you started uh, becoming a physical education uh, uh, trainer in in pro rugby, right? That's right. Yeah. So I did um, pretty much did my twenty years service in the army, uh, in the New Zealand Army. That's sort of the you sort of they look to aim to get you into the twenty year mark. Um, okay. And then uh, just before the twenty year mark came up, I was offered a job in pro rugby, and it was just too good opportunity to to let go. Like I, I could have kept serving. Uh, and I loved the job I did, but um, obviously, you know, my, my transition out of the army, I was looking to go to pro rugby anyway, and I got offered this job. Um, so I went into that just and used all my leave that I had accrued and things like that to to allow me to still get my 20 year mark, um, but still start working in, in professional rugby. Yeah. So yeah. And that was in, uh, still in New Zealand that you started uh, in, in rugby? It was, yeah. I started, uh, I worked for the Auckland. Auckland Rugby Union and the Blues. Um, we did that for about three and a half years, and then I went to Japan for two years, okay. uh, back to New Zealand for a couple of years, and then I got offered a contract up in Ireland. Um, so I did about ten years all up in professional rugby. Yeah. yeah. So and you stuck? Uh, you're stuck in Ireland now. <laughs> what did I say? Stuck. It's a, choice. <laughs> it's a choice to be here. Um, yeah. No, I, I grew up. Uh, my neighbours oh. were Irish growing up, so uh, I was fairly well. I was fairly well. I, I knew the culture fairly well, and um, so when the opportunity came up, I thought, "Oh yeah, I'll come up to Ireland and have a look." And so it's like, and and just love it here. It's just a really nice place to live, and uh, it's called the uh, Galway. Funnily enough, I just found this out um, a couple of days ago. It was called the Galway. Uh, sorry, sorry it's, it's, it's called the uh, Graveyard of Ambition, and I didn't know what that meant. So I read up about it, and what it means is that people come here and love it so much they never leave. Okay. Yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah, good stuff. So now you're you're based there, and uh, you uh, you obviously started a uh, pure athlete, which yeah. is uh, what we're gonna talk about mainly today. Um, so you still work there as as a performance coach, or is it just purely um, you working on the products? No, I do both, and uh, I just recently com- completed my master's degree in leadership, innovation, and change, and I did that because what I found leaving the military was um, uh, there was a lot of uh, uncertainty, I guess, or um, unknowns in terms of what it is to get high performance, and you know my exposure to that in the military with at a very young age working with elite forces. Uh, I was their phys ed instructor to the New Zealand Special Air Service at the age of 22, uh, and then going through my military career, you know we had certain things in place which just weren't being used or no one knew about in professional sport. Um, 
but even that, there were still holes in what we were doing. So I did my master's degree really to look at um, how, how we can look about getting high performance out of athletes. Um, so they looked at a lot of different things. And so I still, yes, I still work a lot with athletes. Um, I do a lot of athletes. I do it through different means. Um, either I see them physically or I might Skype them and just talk to them about what they're doing and things like that. Um, but also run my company, Pure Athlete, yeah. And what kind of athletes do you coach then? You got triathletes on there or just... Uh, uh, I'm just trying to think of it. I don't... I, I, I've, I've consulted with triathletes. I don't have any currently. Um, but we have a local club here which I've spoken to them um, a few times and I've got a few of those athletes who I know quite well so I'd speak to them regularly um, in the gym or whatever um, but I, <clears throat> I would have a vast range of athletes um, you know from racket sports right through to rugby uh, the Gaelic football Gaelic, Gaelic games which is hurling and um, Gaelic football yeah there's a very very fast and excellent game in terms of skill level and stuff like that I've noticed on, on your website that you've sort of created a, a bit of a framework that, that you call the Pure Athlete Totem Pole, yeah. uh, you know, detailing some, some essential elements uh, that are necessary for peak performance. Can you talk a bit about that and, and how you created this? Sure. Um, I guess my training, a lot of, not, not all my training, but I've done a lot of training through different systems and different places around the world because I, was, I, I guess what I was looking for, I was looking for answers to those questions about success, winning, performance, and those types of things. Uh, because every athlete or every sports team I've worked with, you know, at the end of the day, they want to be successful, you know? So, but everyone's got this different formula or the different ideas about how you do that. So I wanted to get um, some something that would give me a framework to that. And I was fully trained as a phys ed instructor, working at our phys ed school in the New Zealand military uh, back in, in the 90s and I got a call from a friend of mine who said you've got to go see this guy talk he's like really good Like, and you know you get, a, you get that from a, a number of people who will say go, go see this person and, and interesting enough I'd just been the weekend before a couple of weeks before that I'd been on eight flights to fly to three locations in 24 hours in New Zealand so I could go and learn off people uh, and you go on these things and you learn a little bit but you don't learn a lot so anyway I went to this see this guy, his name was Paul Check. You may may not have heard of him, he's based down in San Diego. Um, and in two hours, he completely blew me away. I was like, holy heck, I don't know anything compared to what this guy, you know. And he has me fully trained and, you know, qualified as, as far as the military are concerned. And I thought I knew quite a bit, but he just put me in a different level. So I, I thought, I if I really want to be as good as I, I say I want to be, I need to go and learn and I need to go and train under this guy. So I committed to learning under him, and it took me 10 years to get fully trained under him. Uh, and it was very, very complex systems and understanding how the body really works and how to train people and things like that. Um, and he he has a totem pole in his level three training, which is a lot more complex. So I simplified that just for athletes um, and for people that want to train. And when you're early in your training or your understanding of how you train, a lot of people will just look at the physical aspect and say, okay, if I get really fit um, or I do lots of uh, physical activity, it's going to get me better performance. Well, you, that's true to to a, uh, an extent, but at some point that will be limited. Yeah, you sort of plateau, I guess. Yeah, you plateau, and then you, you're really looking for a, a fitness trainer can pull a rabbit out of a hat to try and get you to the next level sort of thing. Um, so... Through the check training and through a lot of the other research I was doing, what I did is I said, all right, there's lots of other things that fall into this. And we would know a lot of those things about nutrition and, and things like that. So I just developed the totem pole just to simplify it and say, okay, what are the really important things? And if you look at the top thoughts, most people say, well, what's that about? You know, it's about your belief systems. Like, you know, um, Carol Dweck talks about um, a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. And those people that have growth mindsets, as opposed to fixed mindsets, um, will have a better outcome in life than anything. Um, but as an athlete, it's really important because when someone presents you with a new idea and a new f framework or a new uh, concept, uh, often what we do is we default back to our old ways very quickly. We might try it for a while and we'll say, oh, that's not really working, you know. Um, 
But having an open mind is, is hugely important. And also the, the thoughts you have, you know, are the, are the thoughts um, working towards your goals or are they looking at obstacles that are in your way or challenges that you have, you know. Um, so that's really important. And, and the belief, the whole belief systems is, is really what drives us, um, the mind-body connection, all those types of things. So it's basically, you know, believe that you can and, and work towards that goal and keep keep on a positive attitude. Yeah, totally. And it's a lot more than that. Like, it, you know, I could spend the next few days going through that. And, and what happens is people uh, people look at the often look at these things quickly and dismiss them very quickly because it, it doesn't make sense to them. Or, you know, uh, they intellectually they might understand it, but they don't understand it and apply it and do these things. So uh, it's, it's actually knowing it at a much deeper level what that thoughts really means because – as I said, most of the athletes I would have worked with, most of the teams I would have worked with, fundamentally where they're, where they're dropping, where they're falling down is, is their belief systems or how they're approaching it from a mental aspect. You know, um, Like I said, I've, I've sat around hundreds of tables, hundreds of meetings. They all want to win. But if someone brings up a new idea, often it's said, oh, no, 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 we wouldn't look at that. It was too hard to do that or that's never worked in the past. Um, so in, in reality... They want to win, but if it's only done in in the way that they're used to doing it, you know. Yeah, because I think you also see a lot of top athletes now are starting to work with your pure pure mental coaches, and definitely um, under underlines the fact that this is this is a really important aspect of uh, of performance. Yeah, it's interesting because I said to um, I've said to a number of people like, if I had the choice, all right, if you only gave me this choice, I said uh, to train an athlete physically or to train them mentally as in get them a better understanding of what they're doing and how they're doing things I would train them mentally I'd go give them a book I'd say here read this book and I said this to a few coaches and the coach came back to me one time and says that book you talked about he says I've read it he goes I would, if I give this to every player then they'll they'll take responsibility for themselves they'll go out there and train themselves they'll do the right things because they'll have a deeper understanding that's how powerful uh, these concepts are you know um, but obviously, you know, a lot of us are, are slow to learn these things, and uh, our job as performance coach, or as, as a you know, coach, is to 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 draw the best out of what's already in people, and that requires undoing a lot of the bad habits or a lot of the things I've learned um, through various sources. You know, yeah. you got like a, a couple of books in mind that, that people might uh, might read, and that, that can help them uh, on that aspect. Yeah, um, the one I, I recommended in that sense was one by uh, Jack Canfield, and it, it's called the the White Book. Um, it's a success formula. It, the White Book's the, the the slang they use for it, but I think if you Google that, it'll come up. Um, it's basically uh, Napoleon Hill wrote a book, Think and Grow Rich, which you may have heard of, may have heard of, because a lot of these concepts which I would have studied and looked at um, aren't in your typical fit, fitness books. I, I couldn't find things. Like, you, you go and buy a fitness book and it talks about a guy, you know, I grew up and I, I started training down the local gym and I went down the local paddock and I started kicking a ball around and, or got introduced to swimming or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it talks about their career and it talks about certain things they did. And they're all doing slightly different things. So what I did, I didn't just start looking. I started, had to start looking in different areas and um, through bumping into different people and things like that. And especially the check check uh, training because you know Paul if you go to Paul and train under Paul you have his library his library covers everything like it's got everything that we humans ever thought of in terms of um, anything to do with the body or you know uh, mental toughness right through to you know how you try how you train elite athletes or whatever it's it's it is, it is, his library just covers everything and it goes right from physical you know the emotional aspects of an athlete performance the mental and also the spiritual aspects so that really opened my mind up and i started if you look at my library now you know, i've got three out three thousand odd books um the same thing and and some of those texts you, you find absolute gems and you think Wow, that's 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 a key in terms of the driver to performance, and that's what I'm saying about thoughts. So, I thoughts are so important. Um, it's positive thinking is only one level of thoughts. Like, you know, that's in terms of uh, that guy called Stephen Sidewall talks about five levels of thinking. 
And the fourth level is positive thinking. So you see self-help books and stuff like that. Um, but they're not. that's not the real top end. The top end is critical thinking. And critical thinking is having the ability to hold, like, for example, two opposing views at one time and then choosing the right path. Uh, and you can only do that through great, creating a greater understanding or greater knowledge of yourself um, and what what your parameters are that you're working on, how you're going to move forward with things. Because most people don't shift that much, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that's so that book, that Jack Canfield book, was is a very good book, good starting point. You know, easy to read, easy concepts, but it's taken from Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich which was written back, I think, in the 1930s. Uh, he did 20-odd years study of successful people. And so those concepts in terms of in business or you know wanting to be more abundant in life and things like that, that's, those, those are concepts. And then you know, if you want to be successful, or success applies at everything. It's not, you know, uh, a lot of people have separated them over the years and said, oh, you know, business success is different to personal success or personal success is different to all the principles are exactly the same. You apply the same principles. Um, so when you when you start doing those, your whole life starts to change, but it, it, it starts with thoughts. Yeah, good stuff. Well, I'll, I'll definitely make sure to put all the necessary links in, in the show notes uh, so that people can, uh, can pick up those books. Uh, right. Next stuff you have on the on the totem is uh, breathing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, again, you know, everything starts and finishes with breath. Um, breath is life force. So, chi or prana are the two words used in Eastern uh, terminology, um, which, which, in, in, uh, when we define that, that means life force. So, the ability, like, if you think of the body like a simple pump, and if you take a breath in, like. A lot of people have learned, even athletes, a lot of athletes I've worked with have reverse breathing patterns. So they're breathing um, using their upper respiratory muscles, so, you know, the sclenes, the sternocleidomastoid, um, and they, their shoulders are rising when they're breathing just standing still. So that would be a reverse breathing pattern, so they're not using abdominal breath. So in that sense, if you think of it like that, what you're doing, if it's a pump, you're only using the top half of the pump. And so the ability to get oxygen down to the deep parts of the um, pelvic basin or into the, the lower part of the diaphragm when the diaphragm goes down and then get that, that, that um, oxygen, oxygen out into the working muscles and things like that, that makes a big difference uh, in terms of performance. Um, and so, you know, we also have like a sympathetic and parasympathetic. And if, if you're stressed too much, Uh, you'll be very sympathetic. So you'll notice a sympathetic breather. They'll be breathing quite fast or they'll be mouth breathers predominantly. Um, And so if you can get them back to parasympathetic, what it does is it it, it basically um, balances the body or gets the body back in harmony. So we have biological oscillators which oscillate in our body. And when those go out, you know, the body's under stress again. So um, breathing is a really, really important aspect to um, your performance and just general health, you know? Yeah, cool. And you maybe have some good breathing exercises that uh, athletes can do? A simple one is, uh, really simple one is, <clears throat> the first thing I'd say on that is is, is is taking time, you know, if you did meditation or meditation type exercise, then it will uh, improve your breathing because you can just focus on your breathing then, you know? And a lot of people are so busy in the day or so busy in their mind you know, they think they haven't got time to do these types of things. But the more I've studied, the more I've learned, these are the things that really matter. So, for example, um, you know, there's an old Zen saying which says, if you haven't got time to meditate for 20, 20 minutes a day, then do it for an hour. <laughs> you know? Um, so a simple thing is just a breathing squat. It's a parasympathetic. So this, this is life force or chi building uh, exercise. So all you do is take a deep breath in, deep abdominal breath so the belly button goes out for the first two thirds and then you, the rib cage will raise for the last third and as you squat down you breathe out through pursed lips slowly until you get to the right at the bottom end of the squat and you keep exhaling until you've got all the oxygen out slight pause breathe in through the nose and do the same as you go up you breathe out and there's a very slow squat so this you, know, you can do this after eating a big you know, four course or three course meal, 
um, because it's it's not about exercising the body to be uh, fitter or anything like that. It's about re-stimulating or, or, or um, giving back to the body. Yeah. So you just do that simple squat exercise is, is good, you know? Yeah, cool. Um, hydration is next. Um, I think a lot of people might uh, make a lot of mistakes against that. Yeah, well, um, I mean, interesting enough, probably in the last 15 years, we would have seen a lot of changes in that. Like, you know, like athletes are walking around in teams that I've worked, worked with now for a long time uh, with water bottles, you know. And, and it's good because we become, we become more aware of it. Like when I started the military, we would go and pack, pack marks for 20, pack marches for 20 Ks and we weren't allowed to touch our water until we got there, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a mindset. It was like, save your water, save your water, because when you really need it, well, some of us, <laughs> need it, we needed it sometimes when we were working out because we were sweating so much. Um, but interesting enough, like, um, you know, hyponatremia is another aspect in terms of hydration which is overhydration uh, because if you uh, say if you get if you get um, if you get dehydrated like I think it's uh, I've got a uh, I don't have the exact details on it because I've, I would have it in a, 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 um, a file I have on the computer somewhere but you know but at one percent decrease in dehydration you start to some of your uh, fine motor skills start to go you know and, and then at two percent for example you, you start the mind starts to go in terms of your ability to think you know three percent four percent by four percent you know you're in quite a bad condition uh so you know key it's a key to performance the thing is with it is um you know i think it's not just about just water it's also adding some like himalayan salt a pinch of that uh, and maybe some honey just to sweeten it up and to add that sugar especially if you're an endurance athlete like a triathlete or something like that mm-hmm. you know a lot of the stuff that's on the market you know they've tested it and they've done all sorts of things and i know uh, i'm not I, I i i certainly i've done an ironman myself done loads of triathlons um and i, I know when you're doing those long endurance things then it, it, you know you do need to replenish the body. You just can't work on work on water at that stage. Mm-hmm. Um, so what you choose in terms of glucose supplementation and that is important. But for the general uh, training, you know, short stuff like that, you don't need a lot of those other other things. You know. Yeah. Cool. Um, and, and what's what's a lot of people are discussing it uh, in terms of hydration during an event. Um, do you drink? Should you drink to a plan or should you drink to thirst? What's your opinion on that? I think I think thirst is thirst is a big indicator, you know. Yeah. Um, like you know, if you're thirsty and you you got a plan, well then drink. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because uh, because because it can get too late. Um, or it the, can be too much. Yeah, or it could be too much. It could be too much. Uh, but generally, if you're thirsty, the you know uh, it, it's probably more of a there's the body signaling you need some some water. It's uh, I, you know unless you've been so strict on plans where you've uh, taught your mind that you know you 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 do need it when you don't. Uh, I, I I haven't seen that personally, uh, but I think uh, the big indicator is is urine. You know, yeah. the color of the urine, and, and we don't always test that, or we don't always uh, see that. But uh, <coughs> but I, I think. I think if you can take a take a take a um, sample of urine, or have a look at this the urine. You know, you can use dipsticks to have a look. Um, you know, the specific gravity testing you can do and stuff like that. Um, but I, I think you know hydration is is hugely important, and you know you get hydrated through some of your foods as well, so the fruits and stuff like that. So I think it's important. Cool. Um, next one, and, and that's sort of. Uh... Conclu- sort of joins with with one of the taglines that I'm uh, using for uh, for endurance junk here. It's it's all about mental toughness. Um, emotions also play an, an important part uh, of of performance. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, when well, you touched on there, uh, mental toughness. I mean, in my earlier days, I would have said that mental toughness is um, more of well, you know, we were, we were we were basically taught mental toughness is physical toughness. That was getting up and down and just keep going. And you do need mental strength to do that. There's more to mental toughness than that. Um, and the emotions, the reason the emotions is, is in the middle of that, that totem pole is because emotions affect everything we do. So it floats. 
Um, you know, when we're when we're feeling good and stuff like that, our emotions are quite calm. And when things aren't going so well, we're under a lot of stress. Then they'll go right up, and they can override, or they can have a huge influence on your thoughts. You know, mm-hmm. um, so they float. And getting well balanced emotions is key in terms of performance. You know, like if if you're if you're like a sinusoidal sinusoidal so sinusoidal um, wave in terms of you know going up and down and you're all over the place all the time, which is a lot of people that are like, you know, they can they can go to the office, jump in their car, and someone takes a car park or cuts them off from the car park, and they carry that um, you know that negative emotion or that bad emotion with them all day, so it affects all the other things they're doing, you know, the uh, because the the body is affected by that. Um, so then you go and train, and you know your, your your mind's not there, but also the the body's still under that other stressor. And it's about like you know when you talk about getting in the zone, because I've I got told that, and I've been on runs many times, and and you think, geez, I really feel right in the zone today. What is all that about? You know, and that's it has, it's having clarity of thought, it's having you know calmness of mind, it's having uh, your emotions. Uh, you know, this, this, you're not you're not in you're in, in a in a peak condition in terms of emotional health. Um, so, you know, you can't em- overemphasize that enough because that zone, getting in that zone, you know, is tough to do because I don't think there's anybody that I've met that can say, oh, I can get you in the zone, All right? It's, a, it's an individual thing. There's, there's only certain days when you wake up and everything feels right, you know? Yeah, uh, definitely well, speaking from my own experience, I mean, I've been racing for 12 or 13 years and think uh you know and, and training as well and the number of days that i've actually been in the zone and, and feeling like completely zen and and you feel like you can you can run forever yeah. I, can, i can count them on, on one hand i think yeah yeah exactly and so you know what i what i look to do with my work and you know and, and training athletes and teams and stuff like that is to get all the aspects that are important to this um to to get you the opportunity to be as close to that zone as you can. Mm-hmm. Because uh, if you look at biorhythms and you look at elite athletes, and I've tracked some elite athletes, you know, I, I believe someone told me that Usain Bolt, I looked at him and said, look, if he goes for a world record around this time, you know, his, his biorhythms are lining up in such a way that he will probably get a world record, you know? Um, so there's people that track all this sort of stuff and, And that's what that's when the zone hits, you know. But it takes it, it means everything's got to line up for you that day, and you can do a lot of these things because some of these things are just daily physical habits. You do eating good food, uh, hydrating yourself, you know, the breath work, doing meditation and stuff like that. Well, they're all ticks you can do. What you can't do is you can't say, "Well, I want that star and that sun in the right position." You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Uh, to, to make it all line up. Yeah. It takes a lot of work and, and everything has to fall into place. Yeah. Um, nutrition is the next the next uh, aspect of the auditorium poll. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, I think there's enough books written on nutrition. To, oh, hell yeah. yeah. And a lot of discussion going on, on on what is now a good diet and what's not a good diet. You know what? I, 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 I tell you this. Um, there's more people now, more than ever in the history of uh, the world, working in nutrition, studying nutrition and working in nutrition, yet obesity and health has gone on decline, you know, obesity mm-hmm. levels are up, health in general, okay, is on the decline, so what's up with that, you know, it's, it's something go, going amiss here, um, and so it comes back to that thought thing, the choices people are making, you know, that's why that's so powerful, because the choices they're making, and <clears throat> I've probably got Well, I did have, I used to have probably more books than on nutrition than anything because it just fascinated me in my early days of study. Um, but I, I just simplify it. Eat good food. Eat whole food. Like if you go to the supermarket, there'll be a line which you can see which has got plastic bags all over it. And you'll see in the fruit and veggie department, you know, no plastic bags over that stuff. It's just stuff taken off the tree and put on onto there. That's the sort of stuff you should be eating. You know, you don't need to overcomplicate it. You only need to overcomplicate it. And, and the only time I've overcomplicated it with clients or people is when they've got serious or uh, serious illnesses or they've got serious uh, lack in performance and you track it back and say, you know, this guy's he's got a gluten intolerance, he's got a lactose intolerance or something like that. So then you need to do more testing. And you can send them to a functional diagnostic nutritionist or something like that and they'll do all the testing. Um, 
But in general, most people just need to clean up their diet. Just get a nice, healthy diet. And look, you don't have to be religious about these things. Uh, and I say this uh, sort of with a caveat. Yes, you do have to be religious in sense. You know, for at least 80 to 90% of the time, you, you dedicate yourself to eating well. And then you can have the odd, you know, nice bit of food and stuff like that. Because if you stick too rigidly to something, what happens is most people will fall off the bandwagon. However, if they stick to 80, 90% of the time well to something, they'll realize, geez, I feel so much better. I'm not going to eat that crap anyway. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, true. And, and I'm actually on a bit of a diet myself because, uh, well, since I started the brand, I haven't had much chance to uh, to do much exercise. And uh, but unfortunately, I kept eating like I was exercising, so the pounds came on pretty quickly. Um, but now for about a couple of weeks now, I've been just uh, staying away from all the you know the the crap and the sugar and uh, and the sodas and stuff, and uh, just eating nice healthy foods and and. Uh, vegetables and fruit and just drinking water and you know, kilos are flying off and uh, definitely um, definitely very important yeah well it's it's about caring for yourself like it's, it's at the end of the day you know like um, like I said the, the physical aspect that's what's at the bottom okay because most people go out there and train themselves and think that's the job done right <clears throat> like it, it's not you, you know it's all about looking after yourself and making wise or healthy decisions the reason that most people exercise, and most people, okay, is stay healthy. Yet then they go and eat crap afterwards, or go and drink, you know. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking it's oh, it's not too bad. I just exercised. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, you know, this, I mean, you eat you eat about on average, you know, the least you probably most people would eat was be three times up to about nine times a day. You exercise. Most people, or most people that are exercising, is probably once. Elite athletes may be doing it three, three times, maybe four times a day. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what's having the most influence on your health? What's having the most influence on your performance? It's what you put in your mouth. You know, um, that's why it's higher up the the the, the pole. That's another discussion, I guess. Like, how how many times do you have to eat? And, and I guess it all depends if you're um, exercising or not. Because um, a lot of people say, "Oh, you eat three times a day," or others say, "Well, you you can eat six times a day, but smaller portions, so to get your energy levels um, the same throughout the day." What's your view on that? Well, I think um, one of the most important aspects that I learned on this is maintaining blood sugar levels. And if you can maintain blood sugar levels, it's much less stress on the body. Okay, and the less stress you've got on the body, the more. If we talk about the zone, you're able to get closer to that zone because. You know, if you if if you and I sat down now and drank uh, four cans of soda or five cans of soda or something like that, that sugar level is going to hit us and we're going to be like flying around the room in no time. You know, and so that that spikes the blood sugar level up, and then it, all of a sudden, you know, half an hour hour later, it's going to drop back down again. We're going to holy heck! I don't feel like I've got the energy anymore. So, by to answer your question, by by having small smaller. Um, uh, portions of meals more regularly keeps that balance of our blood sugar level and once you do that you've got more energy to do things and you don't have those spikes which are hard and wear and tear on the body and it's also if you've got injuries and stuff like that very hard on the body you know all right um next body care um this also brings us to the to the products i guess that you uh, you have with pure athlete yeah yeah um you know like often people you know, our bodies are like a Ferrari. They're the best. They're the best, you know. You don't get another one of these. And th- there's no place that you can go and replace body parts per se, you know. Uh, those, those places don't exist. So you've you got to take good care of the body. You know, that's the vehicle. I see people going into, into you know, uh, sports shops or cycle shops and walking out with a brand new wheel that's costing 300 bucks. And... That wheel might get them a couple of seconds better. It might feel slightly better on a bike. It looks cool, but I tell you what, the thing they're not working on is their body. You know, if you look after that body, that's the thing that's going to make the difference. And you know, like I said, I've worked with a lot of top athletes, and I had one there then just recently there, and his glutes were so friggin' tight. Like he needs to get those things massaged regularly so he keeps himself in good condition. You know, his, his, his um, IT band, I just put my finger on it, it about went through the roof. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of uh, getting good performance, you've got to look after the body. Um, using good products, like 
the, the, the pure athlete came about as a result of some study we did with one of the uh, professional teams I was working with. And what happened is essentially we found that our recovery, people were overtraining and under recovering. Right? If you flip that around and said you can't over recover, really, you know, you, you can overtrain, but you can't over recover. That, that's not technically 100% correct, but if you use that, it'd be a lot closer than the old formula that most people are using. Because um, you've still got to work hard, don't get me wrong. You've got to train hard to be an elite athlete at, at anything, yeah, but you, you've got you, to recover well. You know, you, you can't use the excuse of, uh, I, I have to over uh, recover because otherwise you're not doing the work to, uh, that's to, right. to that's get right. there eventually. That's right. You, you know, but um, if you recover well, so we found in our study that, you know, this was using very high tech um, technology called electrosonophoresis, and we found that, you know, the stress hormones of cortisol um, and uh, creating kinase, kinase, which is not a hormone as such, it's a, it's a, um, it's an enzyme. Well, we found that when you when when you didn't look after your body, if you weren't getting regular body care, and interesting enough, the Milan study, which was con conducted um, uh, over in, uh, with the soccer teams, what they found, the number one thing they found with that, I was just talking to a guy about this, the number one thing they found is regular body care. If you were getting regular body care, it had a big impact on how you were performing, you know? And we've got all these other tricks and gimmicks that people are using. Like I say, the new wheel, the new new graphite uh, seat holder. All right, go out and look after your body. And, and and on top of that, what I did with my products is I put natural ingredients in it because I was finding that some of our athletes were using these chemical sprays and stuff like that. And what I was doing is getting into their bloodstream and poisoning them. So their lymph nodes were getting um, swelling up and stuff like that. Now, in terms of performance, when you're poisoning your body with those sorts of chemicals straight in the bloodstream, right, that is damaging your health in a big way. So, uh, you know, performance blocks, they're big performance blocks. Cool. So when you talk about, uh, you know, all the products that you have, um, body care products, I'm guessing this, these are massage oils and, and bath salts and, and sports balms and, and that sort of th stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the, the bath salts contain, well, it's based on uh, aromatherapy a lot of it, so it's essential oils, um, so all natural, and the essential oils are the immune system of a plant, and the body, the human body is made up of lipids, so the immune system of the plant is a lipid, so it can communicate with the body, and you know, from this has been used for thousands of years, these things, because you know, back in the days, we didn't, we didn't have the ability to go into a chemist or a pharmacy and find out the answer to these things. They just worked it out by using certain plants. They had these effects on the body. Um, so I, I just, I just uh, looked, researched a lot, looked at the formulas, and said, okay, if I use these things here, like gym, ginger, for example, turmeric, black pepper, they all have properties which help with muscle soreness or helping you feel better and revitalizing the body. Um, so yeah, all my all my products are based, they're natural, and they're based on taking care of the body, looking after the body, you know, because that's got to be high on the, the agenda of any athlete, or not only the athlete, but anybody that, you know, any human being, you've got to look after your body. Just, you, you know, you, you can't keep kicking your Ferrari every day you go past it and expecting it to perform well. You know, over a period of time, that thing will look like a clapped out piece of junk sitting in the front of your house. And a lot of bodies that you look out, 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 out at in, in, in society are like that. And I tell you another thing, and I was talking to an athlete yesterday, a top athlete, he was saying to me, he goes, you know, that person there looks pretty fit, but it's amazing how broken down they are. And that's because we're, we're fixated on uh, the visual aspect or the aesthetics or something. You know, and uh, that to the untrained eye, everyone go, oh, that person got a six pack. But underneath it, what's going on? You know, they've got pelvises out of alignment. They've got back problems. Their necks out of alignment. You know, because they've been training incorrectly, doing too many crunches or you know simple things like that. <clears throat> and also, like you'll see a lot of a lot of uh, guys who, are, who uh, you know do a lot of weightlifting or some of that, or just a good athlete. You know, they'll come in and they'll go. Oh, I was just brushing my teeth or just grabbing some groceries out of the boot of my car. My back's gone out. You know? That's a sign straight away that, you know, it's not the brushing of the teeth or picking a small bag of groceries out of the boot of the car that's the problem. It's the way they've been training. Their back is obviously 
uh, been exposed to the wrong type of training. Well, that, that, that takes us to the last uh, part of the totem pole, which is exercise. Yeah, well, like I said before, like you know, <clears throat> you have to train. You have to train hard, and you, but you have to train smart. And you have to do it, do the right things. And like it's all about quality. Um, I I would train people probably less uh, in terms of time than you know what a lot of people would do. But I put really high quality in there. So you know, it could be a forty to sixty minute session, um, and of that there'll be an element always of warm up, mobility, and it'll build in recovery. So recovery, body care type stuff should be built into your session. All right, you don't just have a, a session where it's just get out there and just you know you into your physical aspect and you in a pool of sweat and you walk out of the gym or or anything afterwards. Obviously, for an endurance athlete or something like that, you know, there's longer periods. You know, you could be out cycling for four to six hours, or you could be out running for two to three hours, or whatever. Um, but you can't get away from still having them making sure they're quality sessions. And I had a a saying up in the gym, one of the last places I worked with, one of the teams I worked with, is always leave the gym a better athlete. And what does that mean? That means going in there and doing. Doing your exercises with purpose, clarity of what you're trying to achieve, and always looking to get that little bit better. And it goes a little bit back to the mind thing. Even if that means, you know, when, when you're working with elite athletes, for example, um, they're not going to get a PB every day they walk in there. But what you can do is you can do something to stimulate them to say, you know, I, I know I, I left here better. I left here better. And it could be the simple act of putting on a um, one of the um, – uh, the clips to, of the safety of the bar when you're lifting the weight. I mean, these these things weigh just about nothing, you know. But you put that clip on, and they've pushed that. They know mentally that they've they've done something more than they did the day before because you can't get weights that small. And it's the same principle with you know in, as a triathlete and stuff like that. Rather than just going up there and clocking up miles all the time. Now you do obviously need to build up a, a foundation and, and mileage and stuff like that, but it's, that's for a purpose. You know, um, I, I seriously question often a lot of the athletes I've worked with, a lot of teams I work with, is the quality and what they're doing because often, you know, it's hard to put a figure on it, but, you know, the percentage of quality work and what they're looking in terms of outcomes or the benefits or results, um, the, the, the equation's the wrong way. They're just doing things for the sake of doing them because everyone else is doing them, you know. And another thing I'll tell you just very quickly is what people do if they don't understand. Now, I've been in this industry 25 years and I'm still learning so much. And there's so much I don't know. But what often happens is people watch someone and say, they're doing this and they start to copy it. And that's what I call the what. Okay, what are they doing? So I can go away and do that. But if you watch someone who's skilled and knows what they're doing, it's the how they're doing it. So you can get a, a young fitness coach or something like that who looks like they're doing the same as the person who's been doing it for 20 plus years, but the the, the person who's doing it 20 plus years is doing it for a specific reason. They know what the outcome or what they're looking for from it, you know. Whereas the young person will be bouncing all over the place, and then after a couple of weeks, oh, that doesn't really work. So they'll go and look for the next guru who's going to teach them something else, you know. And athletes fall prey to that, like a weak mind, it goes back to that thoughts, a weak mind will fall prey to these things all the time, they'll look on the internet and go, oh, there's this new supplement out, or something like that, or there's this new this out, you know, if you apply the principles of the totem pole, right, and look after your body that way, you'd be a far better athlete <laughs> than, uh, than someone who's, who's playing dodgems with things, and, you know, ordering the next thing off the internet, because it's going to save their soul, or so, <laughs> save them doing the hard work, it's, you know, you can't do it. Yeah, I guess one of the worst things that you can do is, you know, uh, if you compare yourself to, to one of the pro athletes and, and, and take their training principles and, and, and do what they do and, and apply it in your life because it, it's totally different. It is totally different. Um, <clears throat> but the foundations of anything come back to the, the very simple things, you know, and I've worked with some top pro athletes who have not got good foundations in place. Uh, so you have to take them all the way back, you know, uh, to get better. And some of them don't like that because they're like, hang on a second, I'm already pretty much at the top of my game here. You're telling me I've got to go back? Well, if you don't go back, you're either going to get injured or you're going to get 
um, overridden by a lot of other athletes because you just don't have the we don't have the framework in place to take you to the next level because your body won't handle it. You know, your body break down. Um, I saw an elite, a, a world champion um, athlete who couldn't throw a ball, right? But what he'd done, he masked it. And he got so good at masking it that he uh, could 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 throw a ball to get him by at the top end of his sport, right? Uh, but it took a trained eye to see that, and, and then it, because he was getting all the injuries, it's like, right, we're going to take you back and take him back, and it's hard. You've got to retrain him then, but then he becomes a far better athlete. And the one thing that allows that to happen goes back to the mind again, being open-minded. The athlete says, you know what? I see what you're saying. I can see the value in that. I need to try this. I need to do this, you know? All right. Well, cool stuff. This is uh, this has been really, really helpful and really, really good. Unfortunately, it's, uh, it's about all the time that we have uh, today. Just so uh, to finish off, can you maybe tell us how people can, can get in touch with you and, and where they can find more info on, uh, on the Pure Athlete product and, and how they can order them? Sure. Um, so if they want to go on to our website, uh, so it's just pure-athlete.com. Um, you can see all my contact details on there. And uh, if they want to get a uh, pick up any of our products, then I'll throw in a, a 20% discount. So just uh, use the code when they when they go to check out event. All right, cool. E-V-E-N-T, and they'll give you 20% off anything they purchase. All right, cool. I'll definitely make sure to put that in the in the notes as well. Well, no, thank you very much, Greg. This has okay, been uh, this has been awesome. Okay, thanks, mate. See ya. Cheers. All the best. Cheers. Bye bye. Wow, Junkie, I really hope you liked that interview with Craig Muller. There's so much good stuff in there. Uh, don't worry if you missed it all. We will put all the necessary links in the show notes uh, for you. So make sure to go to www.endurance-junkie.com forward slash seven and then you will find all the necessary links to uh, everything Greg has talked about. Well, that about wraps it up for this week for us. We'll be back on Monday with uh, Paul Newsom, who's uh, head coach at Swim Smooth in uh, in Perth, Australia. And uh, we will be talking swimming, of course. Uh, if you like the show uh, or enjoyed the, the other previous episodes, please uh, take the trouble and go to iTunes and leave us a rating and a review. That will help us uh, grow our audience and it will be much appreciated. So until then, go train him, junkie.